Now that's a weird shipment of goods right there. Bags of ice and a bag of winter boots. <laughs> I was gonna come out here this morning, get back working on my kitchen, but I didn't have anything waterproof. Well, I got rain boots, but kind of needed a little insulation for working out here. Anyway, welcome back to the worm. Uh, we got a couple kitchen days ahead of us. Recently got this whole hillside cleaned out. Whole bunch of brush and down trees down there. Got ourselves a couple nice logs to mill up. That is a 21 inch white pine log. And then we've got a nice aspen there. Next thing we need to do here is pour some footings. I think we need eight or nine. And we got one box here put together and a bunch of pieces from previous concrete footings. I haven't looked around to see if I can find any more, but that is not nine feet there. We've had sleety, snowy, cold weather for a couple days. Now we've got today and tomorrow. Tomorrow's supposed to be the warmest day. It's going to be a high of 45. Not ideal for pouring concrete, but apparently it will set if the temperature is above 40. Once it hits 40 and under, nothing happens. I'm going to use fast setting quickcrete because it gets a lot hotter and I think I can get it to set up. What We're going to have to pour it tomorrow because the following days are going to be back cold and then snow. So today we got to make boxes, put eight or nine boxes in, dig down as much as we can for each one, just exactly like we did with the cabin. And then tomorrow morning, I called around. I have to make like a four plus hour drive to get fast setting quickcrete. So when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to grab my coffee, with my eyes barely open, drive out of here, hopefully get back by, I don't know, noon or early afternoon, and then pour all of those. With any luck, they'll set up. If not, if they're not 100% strength, if they're 50, I don't know. We're just going to have to deal with it. You know, the way I build stuff is set the feet on top of the concrete. So worst comes to worst, we can jack up a corner of the thing, re-pour the concrete. I really hope it doesn't come to that, but that's okay if it happens. The only thing that would be disastrous for this project is if this stayed, if the concrete stayed liquid, I'd be completely stopped. So let's get to work. We only got uh, five hours till it's dark. Ooh, man, it sure looks like snow. I'm a little bit chilled now, but I guarantee I'll be sweating in 20 minutes. You know what? I think I just thought of where the rest of the concrete forms were. The last place we used them, anybody remember? I think was rebuilding my tent deck. I bet they're under there. I thought the forms were still on the feet. Oh yeah. I don't even have to nail them back together. <laughs> I kind of assumed these were single use when I made them. But uh, I think this will be the fourth time each one of these has held concrete. They are admittedly getting a little rickety. Already got there. Oh, this is going great so far. I hope all of them are this easy to dig. That has to be aspen. Does it snap so easily, just like the branches? Yep, nice and white wood inside. Those are the easiest roots to dig up. Just go until you hit giant rocks and call it good. It'd be nice if you could just dig a hole and set a post like you normally would for a deck or something, but there's, as you guys know, there's so much rock, you'll never get the hole deep enough. So ideally, <laughs> you get in the depth of the box and then you hit a giant boulder and that becomes part of the foot. 
that first one, I think we had enough rocks that it's not going to be a problem. It was the soil was pretty tough underneath there. We'll see about this. This is a this hillside might be a whole bunch of old down trees. It feels pretty squish. Rock, rock. A lot of squish. Well, the other good thing about this is this thing is not going to weigh nearly as much as my cabin does. I bet this will end up weighing a quarter of what that does. And if a foot sinks in a little bit and the deck bows a little bit, I'm alright with that. Oh yeah, look at that. That's an old log. Perfect. We hit bedrock. Fifteen swift stabs with the shovel and I couldn't get through a little tiny root. It really does make a huge difference if you keep your shovel sharp. And I, I it could have been me, but it looks like something Tito's used because the whole tip of it's dented in. Oh, I don't have my, see? Always looking for my helmet face shield. Eh, I, I got really good safety squints. Don't you worry about me. I just well sharpen my stabby pole too. Oh geez. Look at that. Can you see the flat end on it? That's pretty good. These are great. They're only taking me like 20, 25 minutes a piece. We'll get this all taken care of today. Whoa. I don't know if you can hear that chainsaw off in the distance. Sound like somebody's out in the forest cutting metal with the chainsaw. I guess it could be one of those uh, cement cutting discs. Sounds like a normal chainsaw though. I'm thinking about making some kind of path out of these rocks too. You get a whole boulder and they're uh, probably freeze thawed in these cool little slabs. I mean, some of them are huge. Some are like two feet by two feet. It seems like if you got a flat spot like that, you ought to do something with it. Oh, nice work. Nice work, Creepo. Yeah. Make a cool patio path. Oh, yeah, we'll do that as the path coming up to the kitchen. That'd be great. Let's see if this is wet enough that it won't split. Looks like it is. We're uh, one box short, so I'm gonna try to find some one inch garbage lumber around here. Make one more. Oh yeah. And the one other thing I gotta do tomorrow, after I get the concrete poured, or maybe before, is get the last batch of names carved on the table. I think this is gonna be the last time for the season. Like I mentioned previously, I've been trying and trying and trying to do it, and I can't get three whole days without rain. I just, oh, here it comes again. Just check the weather again. We got mid 40s tomorrow, low of 35, mid 40s the next day, low of 30. So we'll get them carved put some varnish on it, put a tarp over it for the night. Hopefully within two days it'll dry. I've had some other ideas. I don't like having to go all winter without carving uh, new people's names. Had some ideas of what to do in the winter. So maybe if we get a, another batch in a few months, we'll uh, maybe find something in the cabin to carve. Or maybe not, subject to change, who knows? Plenty of good stuff. Oh 
ice chunks keep falling on my head. Sorry, I, I won't sing anymore. That's what helmets are for, to keep me from singing. Uh, it doesn't like to cut Aspen. That breeze makes the eyes water something atrocious. <sighs> Woo, watch your toes. Now let's just fill that hole back in with smaller rocks, eh? I am tired from, I only did eight of them. I mean, they're only nine to do, so that's good, but I'm surprised how beat I am and how bad my back hurts from doing this. Digging rocks. Whoa. Yeah, we're gonna have a good old fashioned root burning party, just like our forefathers. Got it all. I'm a, a little worried that uh, I can't drag a thousand pounds in this trailer up that muddy hill. Oh yeah, plus I filled my drinking water jugs. Yeah, this is gonna be a heavy one. Good thing is I think there's a winch stump at the top if I need it. Other than I guess having more traction on a four-wheeler, I don't understand why you'd need something bigger than this. And this is one of the smallest ones they make. Of course, I never go anywhere near high speed. I think I've had that out of third gear twice. Generally, it's in first or second gear. There's just no place to get it screaming. But I guess if you had it in fifth gear, I think it's got fifth, I think it's only five gears. If you had it in fifth gear and had the throttle pinned and you weren't going fast enough, I guess you need a bigger one. Surprise! That took way too long to do. There's not even time to get started on the concrete, so I'm gonna carve a couple names here. How shall we go? Well, we should get everybody up to about, by the time you see this video, maybe the last month, month and a half. I was uh, making sure this, this comment was correct the other day, but I don't think I've bought anything with the money that's donated on Patreon or some people just send me five or 50 bucks on PayPal that you haven't seen in the videos, except I think the one exception is propane in the winter. I use the money to keep myself warm, but everything else goes to building projects or tools or tarps or screws, so every single cent you've seen in the videos. And I know I've said this before, but I get an email every time somebody donates anything, whether it's a dollar or whatever it is. And a lot of times people attach a little message. I read every one of them. And every single time it kind of stops me in, in my tracks. And I just shake my head and <laughs> think this is just freaking amazing. So don't forget, I appreciate the hell out of every one of you. And the other people watching the videos, they appreciate it too, whether they know it or not. Also, if you're new 
I usually uh, try to guess names, first name, last initial from your email address or your screen name. Some of them I'll send a note, but if I don't hear right back, then it's, you know, I only do this two or three times a year. So it could be another three, four, five, six months before you get carved. So drop me a note. I'd appreciate it. I kind of meant to warm this uh, varnish up. Jeez. I meant to put it in the cabin for a little bit for the day or something. Yeah, this is... <laughs> this is thick stuff. Holy cow. I don't know if you can see that. Sheesh. Well, it'll work or it won't. I guess worst case is we just have to redo this in the spring, but I think the whole table's going to have to get a coat or two every year. That looks pretty good. Might as well give you a shot before I forget. Once we get back to concrete and who knows where my brain will go. Oh, who did that? What a dip. It's hard to say if the names need that pencil in it. Uh, once the indents get pretty full of mud and crud, they stick out pretty nicely. Hey, thank you all for the uh, fast set concrete. I appreciate it. Just next time, if you could deliver it, I, yeah, I'd really like that. Ooh, those are some nice scraps, aren't they? I think those are the edges of the uh, floating coffee table. We should use those for something. All right, temperatures are still good today. A little bit cool tonight, but I think it's going to be above freezing. And uh, as I recall, you can also use warm water to set concrete off. I don't know if that's necessary with the quick set stuff. But uh, let's not use 40 degree water, heat it up to 80 or something. Actually, I think I got some shower water already ready to go. Yep, we're already full. I used, uh, first I used a lighter for the shower back when we were just, Tito and I were just showering on a pallet out there. The T is for time to shower. And of course, you constantly burn all the hair off your hands using a lighter on a big burner like that. So I got one of these sparkers. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know if you've ever seen these. This thing is fantastic. I was afraid it was going to be a little overhyped, but it sparks big every time. And I finally wore the flint out. They give you a whole bunch of flints. All you do is pull this little spring-loaded thing up. Drop a new flint in, let it go, that's it. Great tool. If I remember, I'll put an Amazon link for you if anybody wants to get one for any reason. But for lighting stoves, this is top notch. And actually, it's so light that back when I was backpacking a lot and always carrying a stove with me, I might have thrown this in. I don't know. It's probably a couple ounces. Now they're calling for a fair amount of drizzle today, but I think as long as I keep the unused bags covered up, we just got to go for it. Seems like every year there's some project like this that I cut so close. I can't remember, you guys remember when I poured the stuff for the cabin? It seems like there was one other project that I was rushing concrete before the winter set in. Yeah, I know there was because I've had to buy this quick set stuff this, I think this is the third time. That means three winters I've done this. You know, but there's so much fun stuff to do in the summer. What are you supposed to do? Plan ahead? <laughs> <clears throat> by the way, I think I mentioned before a song by uh, Corey Wong and Sierra Hall that I was really into. Oh, it was when I was making the window shades. I've been listening to nothing but Corey Wong for a couple weeks now and that's the the album that Tito and I are working our way through is Corey Wong Power Station Tour East Coast if you want to check it out. We're only allowed to listen to one track a day so I listen to that track a couple times and then I go listen to his other albums but the West Coast album the first well, I mean the whole thing is great but the first three four or five tracks are just phenomenal. And I thought I sort of recognized the name Corey Wong. He is the guitarist, the rhythm guitarist for Wolfpack. Is that how you say it? I think that's how you say it. He's phenomenal and he gets everybody, it seems like he gets everybody to play with him. 
Okay, we got to stop talking. I'm, I'm listening right now. Well, not right now, but... I only got enough quick crete, the fast set stuff, for two bags per hole, and I don't think that's going to be enough. I put it all in the back of my car, and as I was driving away, I'm looking back and imagining two bags per hole. It's like, that's not enough. And I turned around to go back to the store and get enough for three bags per hole. But just going over a little tiny bumps in the road, my car was bottoming out. So this is what I got to work with. I do have some leftover bags of the regular stuff. So maybe we'll do two quick set and a half of this stuff. If it matters, it's a little bit below ground level. Just has to be thick enough to make this thing float. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, this stuff's a little chunky. It's left over from the cabin. Yeah, it'll work. Maybe. Oh yeah, by the way, I should mention, I got all nine of these boxes put in, went to sleep, must have slept for, I don't know, a very short amount of time, and I like woke up, I screwed these up. So the deck goes out that way, and this was gonna support the middle of it. However, the part underneath the roof is nine feet, and the unroofed part is seven feet. So these actually needed to be moved down a foot in order to support the uh, big fat uprights that are gonna hold up the whole roof. But I just decided what I'll do is put the uprights right on top of where these footings are, and then we'll figure out some way to make the roof stick out a little bit further. Maybe put some cool braces under there. I don't know, some twisty log bits or something. I was so tired and my back was so sore I wasn't, didn't even dream of coming out here and moving those things. It's kind of fun when you screw up, you get something to figure through on the other side of it. Ooh, plenty warm, plenty warm. Oh yeah, it's already setting up. Uh-oh. Okay, well, I didn't do a very good job on that one. Maybe I'll use cooler water. <laughs> wow, yeah, we're not gonna have any problem with this setting up. Look what the normal work time is for this stuff. Concrete sets in 20 to 40 minutes. Wait four hours before subject to any strain. <laughs> yeah. This will work great. Oh, that one's much better. I didn't have enough water in the last hole. I sure don't like hauling cement bags around, putting them in my car, breathing all the dust and everything, but and concrete is kind of fun. Ooh, I might have made this a little too soupy. We'll see. I was sitting in the shower warming up another five gallons. Didn't realize it started raining. I came out here and all my bags in the trailer are wet. But it turns out these bags have a really thin plastic layer inside of them. So hopefully these are all set up inside my trailer. This feels more appropriately temperatured water. Maybe 70 or 75. Last hole and I'm glad because my back is really starting to hurt. That's nine. Should we go back and check the first one, see if it's set up at all? See if we didn't screw up too big? Mm. 
not bad. Pretty ugly. Look at all that. Somebody really didn't know what they were doing when they did that one. Jeez. Super lumpy. Not enough water. On the other hand, that looks much nicer. Nice and smooth. <laughs> that was only two or three hours and I'm whooped. Actually, I feel more whomped than anything. Yeah, I slightly whooped too. Should we sign our masterpiece? Do a ringworm. That one's a little bit soupy. Ringworm 23. I prefer if posterity never forgot. Who is this posterity guy anyway? Always wondered. All right, they set up for about two weeks. I think we did it, I think it's gonna work. I mean, who knows what percent of the maximum strength it's at, but I think it's gonna be just fine, especially since I would have been happy just to build this thing right in the dirt. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> All right, I guess we need to make some feet, don't we? You know, it's something I realized from the very first building project when I moved out here to the woods, and I have not been able to remember a single time since then is when I clear all the trees out, I keep the perfectly straight logs for saw logs, I always use chunks of cedar for the feet for whatever I'm building, and any part of a cedar trunk that's not straight, you know, I can't mill it, can't sit, no sense in setting it aside, so I cut it up into firewood. And those slightly curved things, I mean, when you cut a piece that's a foot or two long, a little curve doesn't matter, it actually kind of looks cool. If I'd have saved a couple of those curves, I'd have, what do we need, nine feet here. Instead, what I got now is to have to cut up good cedar saw logs, which I don't even think we got that many good cedar saw logs, so we might have to find something else around here, maybe something that's busted off or down. Oh yeah, we got one more over there that was like a, a two-topped tree like this, and one of them ripped off and, well, it didn't fall off, it's still attached. It's very straight. If we could get some lumber out of that, you can see where it ripped off there. It is like... 10 or 12 feet up, so there's no way I can get up there to cut it. It is almost completely ripped off though. I want to... <laughs> Let's see what happens if we just hook it up to the four-wheeler and take off driving. Maybe it'll come down. If it doesn't break off by the time I hit this tree, we could have some interesting issues. Sometimes issues are fun though. <laughs> it broke off like two feet before I hit this tree. Perfect. That's good. We can uh, earmark the other half of that tree for another cedar log if uh, we need it. That one's pretty straight, good size. I always go for the banged up ones first if you can. Well, since these aren't nearly level with each other, I guess we better do some measurements. So it looks like from here to the lowest one might be at least a foot difference. This is the best way I've figured to do this. Just put a string on there, a bubble level, and take your tape measure and measure down from the string on each pad. Seventeen. Twenty. You know, you're supposed to obviously put the bubble level in the middle of the string because it always droops a little bit. We're going to cut these all down and size them everything so it doesn't matter. But sheesh, it sure looks like from one to the other is like two feet different, but that's the hillside, the lumpy ground and everything. All right, looks like the highest number we got is 20. And the lowest number we got is 9. So that's the 9 and that's a 20. So that's the highest spot to the lowest spot. I'd like this thing to be, say, a foot off the ground. So we'll start with rounds about a foot and I'll, we'll work our way up to about two feet. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of that air gap under everything I build. You don't get critters underneath there living. 
and it does give you a little space to store stuff keeps uh, ventilation through there and everything seems to work it's worked out fine so far actually before we cut these you know think of how we're gonna set this whole thing together so I've done before just done a stump cut it flat on the top and set the frame of this thing right on top of it maybe put a block inside that you can screw to just so it doesn't like accidentally slide around of course you always have the possibility that the other the whole thing will tip over but I never even see them wiggle once all this stuff's built it's so heavy but sometimes I also like to square off two sides of the stump so your frame can fit onto the stump you screw in through the sides and then it has little ledges that holds the whole thing up in which case I have to make it I don't know another 10 12 inches taller let's just take a quick look at the cab and see how we did that yeah that's all just sitting on top of them she's a floater just chilling right there yep had the same thought on this thing you can just pop it out pop a new one in whenever it rots hey we might be able to save that one we just pulled down for a saw log there are two more trees i forgot to take down here there's our kitchen right there this is a cedar it's very curved and it's definitely leaned right at the kitchen and then right behind it is a i don't know if that's I think it's a spruce and it needs to come down because it's quite dead, 100% dead. See, I don't have to feel so bad about myself. I save these uh, curved trees. I let them stand until just the time when I need them so they don't go bad laying on the ground. This tree is leaned right into that one, which if it had to come down, it's fine. I don't really want to take any more trees down here if I don't have to. We're going to see. It's a hard lean right at it. But I wonder if we can get it to fall through there. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to hinge sideways, but if it doesn't, I'm going to have to drag it down anyway. It worked. Oh, what a dum dum. My main trail going up to camp still has that gargantuan pine laying across it waiting to be milled up. And I just dropped this against the secondary path going up there. Main trail goes over there. This one goes here. Oh, it's not nearly as much tree as I thought up here. Never mind. Just got to trim it back to here and we can get through. That was, that was a false alarm. Just go ahead, take your seats. Ah, oh, this is perfect. We got an upright right here. Then we got a saw log down here. And then we got feet, a whole bunch of feet. So this is nine, let's just call it, let's make it 12. So we're gonna add three onto every number. Next one's 18, 21. Next one's 20, 23. to do is mill now start putting the frame together but we got that one more dead tree it's got to come down
path is getting crazy muddy already just from dra dragging logs around. If I don't spray some wood chips on it right now, it's just gonna keep degrading. Once it, once you wear through all the kind of top soil, there's no bringing it back. You just gotta not drive on it for a year or two and it'll kind of firm back up. Luckily, we've got some branches around here. Yeah, even this is getting fairly muddy and this is the trail that's gonna get used probably all the time to come out here. It's gonna be kind of fun just to blow this right down the hill. Well, that's certainly less muddy now, ain't it? Just realized uh, before everything freezes, I gotta get rid of some of this sawdust, especially since I'm gonna probably easily double that pile right there, just milling stuff for this kitchen. It definitely doesn't last as long as the wood chips. It just kind of runs off and dissolves, but gotta get rid of it somehow. Alright, one more thing I want to get done. Want a sip? We're going to skin these puppies and then uh, do some weird painting. Don't worry, they're not real puppies, they're just logs. Jeez, take it easy. But since I use cedar exclusively on anything sitting on the ground or on a cement pad, I don't think it's that big a deal. I'm gonna try this anyway. I'm just really curious to see how it goes. You basically pour or brush on used motor oil on anything that's gonna come in contact with the ground. I mean, it makes sense that it waterproofs it a little bit. I also kind of imagine that not a lot of critters can grow on nasty old used motor oil. I thought about doing it for the cabin, but I just, I kind of hate the smell of old oil. I mean, like, you know, the smell of creosote, like they use on railroad ties and stuff, just doesn't do it for me. I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal, but I'm just kind of curious to see what happens. So be able to compare these feet to the feet on the cabin made exactly the same way, the same concrete, everything just a year apart. We'll just see if the kitchen foundation dissolves slower than the cabin. Uh, gross. Oh, other side. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess we'll just flood it. I'll leave these upside down until uh, get around to doing the next step once we get the lumber all milled up. This would probably make more sense and work a lot better if you weren't using real fresh cut lumber. Because even on the dry heartwood of this thing, this oil barely soaks in. Well, we'll give it some time, do all of them, come back and see. Let's put a whole bunch on there. Get it dripping and then we'll see if it soaks in. I guess the picture in my head was, this is dry wood that you'd see it soak in, you know, a half an inch or inch or two inches or something. Maybe we even go around and do some of the sides too. Who knows? Who knows? You ever find yourself doing this i'll give you a weird little tip not the oil the concrete pads and the log rounds you of course want the concrete to be flat on top but don't worry about too much about getting it just level I mean, if the concrete's really wet and it takes a long time to settle it'll kind of settle out level because of that whole gravity thing if the concrete pad's not perfectly level and the end of the log isn't cut off perfectly perpendicularly which is really hard to do with the chainsaw you can then go back and twist the log around 
and find an orientation where it stands up just about straight. It's nice when you find little tricks like that where you don't have to be too precise in the work you do because some of us some of us are just not that precise. This round is from a different log that's been down for quite a while. It's a lot drier than the others. Let's see if this soaks in a little better. All right, that's it for now. I got, uh, I got another really fun project I'm gonna start working on. I should probably keep working on this today, but I got all my parts in. You wanna see it? I'll, I swear I'll show it to you. Come on. I can never remember what I put in videos because I cut so much out when I edit. Have I told you about this uh, machete chandelier I had the idea for? I've got two different Ryobi lights. I got the uh, lantern one and the little, I don't know what they call it, a work light, little globe. This takes a lot less power, so I'm probably going to go with this one. But I'm going to take one or the other apart like I did the outside light on the cabin. God, you're not likely to cut your hand off getting this thing open, are you? Sheesh. So with the outside light, we took this off, pulled the light out, extended some wires, mounted this on the inside of the cabin. You plug a battery in, you got a light switch right there, and this is run to outside. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put this base right next to the other one that goes to the outside light, so we'll have them side by side. This one goes into the ceiling in the cabin, and did a lot of shopping. I got my machetes. I think I got eight or 10 of them. So I'm not sure exactly how we'll do this. I might just bust the handles off, might leave half the handle, but I wanna put them up on the ceiling, like radiating out from the light. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll put some bends in these machetes. It'd be kind of a cool reflector if they came out and then bent down like that. I don't know, I couldn't think of anything else weirder to do for the light in there. So I think after lunch, I'm gonna get started on that. I think I'm gonna do that today. Just, it's a gorgeous day, I should be outside, but. I don't know, it seems like a lot of fun. Can't believe it's lunchtime already, which means it's midday. I notice this every year. Look how low the sun is on the horizon. That's as high as it goes this time of year. I mean, yeah, I know it's not the Northwest Territories or Alaska or anything, but it's Northern Michigan days are pretty short in the winter. I can smell the oil way downwind. Hopefully that fades. Thanks as always for watching my silly videos come on back next week if you want maybe we'll make a machete chandelier or i don't know maybe we'll be doing milling i'm super excited to do this milling too it's got to be like 50 60 feet of perfect milling lumber and perfect wood look at that sucker but now with that giant saw and mill it's just gonna be so fun to cruise through that so all right peace see you soon